I really have no aspiration whatsoever to become a conductor. Um, I, I'm happy being one of the masses that are being conducted. And I was wondering <laughs> what the appeal, what for you personally, what what the appeal is of of being a conductor. Like, what? Why would you want that amount of responsibility? That is a really good question. Um, I don't know if I have a really good answer, except that uh, when I was younger, you know, I was studying music as a, you know, young person, teenager, um, and I always wanted to be a teacher. I went into music teaching in my career, um, and I felt a kind of a calling to teaching, and I find conducting really, I mean, besides waving your arms around, which is important, it's, it's really about being a teacher. Um, I don't know. I, I find myself personally, I'm very comfortable on the podium. I, um, I just love to do it. And um, there have been a few times in my career where I have had moments. Uh, I remember once I was conducting a, it was a chamber choir. It was actually a high school choir, but it was an audition choir and they were fantastic. And we had worked together all year and we were doing a big concert and we were singing I think it was Mozart's Ave Verum. And halfway through, I literally stopped conducting. They just kept singing and I started to cry. Like there was something, there's something so magical when the communication between the, the conductor and the ensemble, I know it sounds a bit hokey, but it, it's, there's just, I don't know, there's just something amazing about it. And uh, I, I love, I love being a performer too. I love ringing handbells, um, but I, I do love being a, conductor it is responsibility and conducting isn't just about waving your arms and it's about dealing with your ringers it's about yeah. you know, your ringers yeah. have conflicts <laughs> like you know it's managing a group of people um but it's i don't know i find it exciting i love choosing repertoire and i i don't know rob what about you <laughs> um conducting really is about a lot more than than just being in front of the, the group, like you said, all of the stuff to actually get you there. But if you think about it, some people play a trombone, some people sing, and some people's instrument is actually conducting, like all of those people in front of you are the instrument. And I think one of the, one of the joys about it is discovering what is possible with a piece of music. Um, it evolves as you work on a piece of music there will be give and take from the people who are in your ensemble and they'll do things and you'll hear that and you'll adjust your ideas to what's going on in the group um and then they they take what you're trying to show them so in essence doing a piece of music is really a journey it changes over the course of of putting it together i i find that a lot with my students because we do need to take a while to work on something, but when they finally start to get it, they start giving back as well. And, and that's when the real fun begins. Right, because so I mean, for me, I, I definitely, I, I mean, I really enjoy, that's the part about making music that I love the most is being a member of an ensemble and watching things come together and hearing when, you know, when it becomes more than just notes and it actually starts being music. Um, and so this is kind of interesting. The other, as I feel that, you know, as a ringer, I have a lot, I have the ability to influence what is happening with the music. Um, on a, do you have any opinions about directing from within a choir? Um, or do you have any experience, you know, firsthand? And is there, you know, how would you compare that to actually, you know, being directing from within the choir versus being on the other side of the table and, and having to, having to uh, communicate from across the table to the choir? Hmm. Luckily, I've never really had to do too much conducting from within the handbell ensemble. I've been fortunate enough to always have enough ringers. Um, I know sometimes conductors have to go in the ensemble. I think it takes a pretty special individual to be able to do that um, because you're concentrating on your own part, but yet you're supposed to be listening to everybody else's part. Um, there's no way you can do two complete jobs at the same time. You, you can do part of each job. So um, unless you're some sort of superhuman, but uh, I think at that point, 
I think you have to start thinking, if you're in the ensemble, you have to start thinking more like you're a chamber group and that you're depending on your ringers to, to work and, and really watch and listen to each other as much as possible so that you can, you know, when you think about it like a string quartet, they have a leader, right? Their first violinist is their leader. It's the one that starts and all that kind of stuff. There is a leader, but and there has to be a leader to at least get the ensemble going. But uh, um, yeah, I think yeah. sometimes you've got to give up a bit of that maybe control and, uh, and, and work on making the ensemble work together even more because they don't have that person in the front. Right. So do you find that as a member, I know that you ring as a member of your quintet, quartet? Quintet. Yeah. Quintet. Um, do you end up adopting sort of a conductor's role as part of that group, even though it is an ensemble um, because of, you know, your, just do you end up adopting a leadership role I'm definitely the leader um you know I'm the one who chooses all the music does but um I, I we we program together like you know let's say we have a gig for something and I'll make I'll make suggestions like this is the kind of thing I think but you know I'll say here's the 10 pieces I think we could do we need to pick six what do you think um uh I give them often choices in where they play um but definitely, you know, in any group there, I feel there, there kind of needs to be a, some sort of leadership. Um, but certainly in my quintet, there is much more discussion and much more, um, like it's less of a dictatorship, let's put it that way. <laughs> just, a little bit more of a totally More of a cooperative. Just a little. Yeah, it's, it's a little bit more of a democracy with a small dictatorship, but um, I think that's fine for, for the other four members because the, I don't think they don't want all the responsibility of choosing them. Like, they're not comfortable in that land. They're happy that I'm doing it. And, uh, but certainly, uh, you know, I don't, like, there's a lot more talking about, okay, this bell and how can we move this? And then somebody says this, and the, there's a lot more of that discussion in a quintet than there is in a large ensemble, because if you did it with a large ensemble, you just run out of rehearsal time. Right, um, right. So, but, so Rob, I mean, do you, have you had to, to, to conduct from within the choir? You know, sometimes you have an emergency and a couple of your choir members, just, they just can't make a performance. Have you had to step in and, and ring while also having to act as conductor? Oh, yeah, absolutely. And uh, even at rehearsals, we will have somebody away. So I'll step into whatever part is absent. And um, depending on the piece, if it's um, one that at whatever point we are at in the rehearsal process can hold together without me actually being up there and keeping things together, then, you know, I, I'll play. And that actually is a good thing because it promotes people having to listen to each other. Uh, but if it does start to come apart, then I'll come out and I'll get back up there and conduct and we'll just drop that part uh, where, where I had been filling in. Um, but it, it's a nice experience because like there are times when I'm rehearsing my group when I just say, I'm going to start it and I'm going to give you one measure and then I'm going to stop and you have to keep going. And when they are forced to listen to each other, it's really incredible some of the results that, that you get. Yeah, it's actually um, kind of interesting. Um, at uh, With one of my, I'm, I'm a member of multiple musical groups. Um, my One of my wind ensembles, uh, we we played it. We we played it festival, and the adjudicator actually had our conductor step away, <laughs> and he asked the he asked the band to play. It was a, a slow lyrical rendition of Amazing Grace, and he the the he had the the adjudicator brought us in, and he told the band to just play without without looking at the stick, and it was actually a. Uh, the, the band, when we started listening to each other, it was actually a much, a much more coherent performance. <laughs> not, not that I'm saying that our conductor is, 
it does nothing except wave his hand and, and keep time. Um, but there definitely is a benefit to being um, to being cognizant of the sounds around you and and going with it. And then having the conductor gives you that that extra reinforcement. Um, that you know, it, when everything is consistent and everything, you know, the, the band is the band and the conductor are thinking in the same, you know, they're 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 going the same direction. Um, it's actually pretty magical when it does work out. Yeah, that is definitely. A, it's a different level of musicianship, and it's a different level of conducting. Depending on your ensemble, you can conduct that way and not have to stick to a beat pattern. You're shaping the music more. I think that's probably a really good place for us to finish up on this beautiful afternoon. Uh, I'm assuming that it is sunny pretty much everywhere in the province where we're uh, viewing this Q&A session from. Uh, so it'll be nice to get back to some of that sunshine this afternoon. So Lisa, thank you. That was uh, an excellent Q&A uh, and many great questions to get this part of the discussion going as well. So again, thank you everybody on behalf of the Ontario Guild of English Handbell Ringers and we're going to finish it up there for today. Thanks.